Hey, it's Clinton, and I'm back with more Gwent in The Witcher 3. Uh, today we're going to antagonize yet another blacksmith uh, in a, with a match of Gwent. Uh, blacksmiths are easy targets. Uh, I've had good luck beating them, so my deck hasn't changed all that much from the last video, which I covered the basics of Gwent. Um, still using the same deck. But this time around, I wanted to show you what it's like to play a match and be down a round and then come back to win it. Because you do need to win two rounds out of three. And I just wanted to show you the flow of a match and so sort of like the considerations I made uh, when in a situation where I was down one round already. And admittedly, the AI didn't make the smartest decisions. Um, it would be really great if there's a multiplayer component of Gwent. Uh, I mentioned again in the last video that some fans did make an online version of Gwent that you could play on your browser, but that that lasted all of one weekend before it got shut down uh, for whatever reason. I don't know all the details of that, but uh, you know, we're just kind of stuck playing this card game within a role-playing game, which is fine. Which is fine. I'm having fun actually playing Gwent. It's a huge distraction uh, from the actual game of The Witcher. But in any case, we've just started the match. I'm trying to get a nice hand of 10. And um, I've got a solid spread here. Uh, I think I'm considering getting rid of uh, Yarpin here, which I do. And um, I've got the two uh, Blue Stripes Commandos, which is awesome. They're just going to... Um, help each other out so much when I put them out in the same row together they will essentially double each each other's um, strength so yes I'm definitely keeping them for the tight bond abil ability uh, what else um, the opponent's deck again is a uh, square tell um, he's gonna um, use the elves and I have my northern realms deck and I decided to stay with the hand I have there. Now just a fair warning, uh, there will be some somewhat long pauses during this gameplay and I think I was either called away for a moment or yeah, just momentarily distracted while I was actually doing the gameplay. So sorry about that. I'll try to edit it down if if possible. But uh, yeah, there are uh, a couple of spots where I was just sitting there thinking as well. So sorry for the long pauses. I'll try to uh, fill in the dead air uh, with some um, helpful commentary when that happens. So in this hand, I don't actually have my strongest cards. Uh, the cards that have the highest strength in my deck are the ones that are uh, artillery cards. Uh, so I have a couple right now, the trebuchet, and I think I have two trebuchets. And I and I like to conserve my uh, beefiest cards for later, for like a second round, um, just in case. Right? I don't want to just uh, go all in with my strongest cards right off the bat. And you can sort of see that's what happens with the AI in this match. They, they sort of overextend themselves in the first round. <clears throat> so right now he's uh, got the Bitter Frost that has uh, frozen both our front lines. And it's, uh, it's uh, more of a, a detriment to me because I have my Blue Strike Commandos and they've uh, been reduced from, I believe, a total of 8 to 2. So, that's the problem right now. I'm sorry, so they're, they're uh, combining for a total of 4 points. Oh yes, because they, they still double each other up. So, uh, normally they'd be 1 strength each, but then they have the um, tight bonds that are both 2 points each, so with a total of 4. My mistake there. Yeah, you know, so I've been just hanging around, uh, just playing games with just the same deck. And from what I've seen of the Squid Tail, they don't seem that exciting to me. Uh, I've heard that the Monsters deck is really strong. 
if you can get all the cards going and also the Nifgardian Empire but the score I tell from what I've seen so far maybe I'm just uh, again I'm just playing these blacksmiths who don't have the best decks um, just not very impressive Uh, I notice a lot of the cards in the elves deck they have the ability agile which which you know allows you to choose which row you put them in you know you might have a choice of like put them in the close range close combat row or you can put them in the ranged row and that's sort of neat but I don't know I can think of much better cards to use in those so we're really uh, going back and forth so far uh, the front ranks, the close ra close combat uh, row is still locked down by the Bitter Frost. And um, right about now, I'm considering removing the, the Bitter Frost weather effect. And I'm, I'm totally able to do that because of my leader ability. Uh, this is something I didn't really talk about last time. Um, each faction, with each faction, you get to choose uh, from a, a few different leaders in uh, for northern realms uh, I have uh, King Foltest you see him do down there in the bottom left corner um, he, I've uh, got access to two varieties of him the one I've chosen is the ability to clear away all weather effects once per match so that's really neat I don't have to have uh, a card in my deck that does that I can just pull that out from a uh, King Foltest whenever I need to but just once just once per match so yes, this is a, one of those times where I'm just kind of paused for a very long time. I haven't really done anything. I think this time I was just mulling over my next move. And I decide to uh, pull out full test and uh, bring some sunshine down on the board and clear away the bitter frost. So you can see now how my uh, score just jumped all the way up. And then he immediately pulls ahead again by putting another card in the close combat row. So he just ekes ahead by one point, and at this, and at this juncture, I'm thinking, well, I only have five cards in hand. I have the card advantage over him going into the next round. He's only got three cards, and he's really overextended himself just to get the lead this round. So I'm thinking of just giving it to him. You know, it's a close, it's a close race this round, but I want to conserve my strength for later in the match. So there I go, I passed, and that automatically gives the round to uh, my opponent here. That's fine, we lost the battle, but we haven't lost the war just yet. So this is really interesting. Um, I've dropped the round, he's up one, and he decides to pass right away. And that's a mistake, because with my Northern Realms deck, one of the other abilities unique to this deck is that on the third round, at the beginning of the third round of a match, I get to draw an extra card from my deck. So this is an easy win for me. Unfortunately, I still have to play one card to ensure that my uh, victory points is higher than his. And I decided to play a five point card because I wanted to save the uh, one point card for later because he's going to buff other cards in the row with him. So it's got some um, a little bit of synergy there. I want to keep that for the final round here, which with we just started. Pardon me, I can't uh, speak today. Okay, he's, he puts on another muster card, but he doesn't have any other cards left in his hand to uh, to play. So that's too bad for him. Uh, so it's pr looking pretty good for me. I'm up two cards on him in terms of cards in hand. And I have pretty strong cards that I saved up. So it's 12 to 11. Just checking out his cards. I've never really seen some of these cards before. And uh, it's pretty straightforward from here. So let me see what tricks he tries here. Yeah, he tries to put out a fog. Uh, kind of hurts himself more than he hurts me, to be honest. And he's out of cards, so he has no choice but to pass. And I'm already in the lead, so it's just a matter of just throwing down everything I've left. 
and just squashing him like a bug. And yeah, that's that's an example of a game uh, where you can, you know, feel okay about losing one round, especially the first round, as long as you have the ammunition and a general plan on how you're going to come back the next two rounds. In this case, I want a new card. Uh, this is something I didn't get to show you last time. Uh, if you win a match, you do win your whatever money that you bet, that you put on the line, and you also usually win a new Gwent card to add to your collection. And that's really important because so far from what I've seen, the, the Gwent cards are a little hard to come by in the early game. You really have to make sure you talk to every merchant in every village, talk to every barkeep, talk to every blacksmith, and uh, you'll usually find an option to play a game of Gwent with them. And as you can see, if you play kind of slowly like I do, a, a game of Gwent can take about 10 minutes. Um, but hey, as mini games go, it is a pretty cool game. But that's all I want to show you. Uh, the car new card I got uh, doesn't have to do anything with my deck. It's for another faction's deck. But thanks for watching. I'll do more Gwent next time. See you all next time.